Well, folks, uh, welcome to the next section. I am really excited. This is a, a neat little program that we've got, and it's the blog. There's a, uh, I'm with me here today is the RFR blog director, Christina Calloway. Christina, welcome. How are you doing? Good. I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing good. I'm really excited to be here with you. So um, tell us a little about uh, who you are and kind of uh, how you found recovery from religion. So I was raised evangelical Christian, random, uh, non-denominational church in the South. My dad was the minister of music. My mom was the pianist. I was the oldest daughter on stage every Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, and then like, it, it's interesting because with what I do for the blog now, I see a lot of uh, everyone's deconversion stories. And it's interesting how much similarities there are yeah. between all of them it's so for for me it was just you know as i was you know coming of age there was just this moment where stuff stopped making sense and you know the person i wanted to be that i thought you know there was a template in the bible that i could follow for being the kind of you know good benefit to the world type of person and it's like some people were able to do that but other people were able to look at the bible and use it to justify doing evil or harming other people right. and and so yeah just this, this whole entire and then years it took me years to like work through all of it and and i thought i had worked through all of it and it i would like try to find help along the way but all i would find was like christians trying to get me to come back right and and then so that was in my 20s that that first happened and i literally did not find rfr until i was 38. i was just it's all like research random things on the internet internet rabbit holes and somewhere at the end of the an internet rabbit hole i was listening to an episode of the thinking atheist and you guys were advertised on there and it was like this exists <laughs> sign me up so i go to the website and there is uh, like, there's a list of things and it's like helpline agent. And like, I wasn't, you know, it, but then there was, there were two creative things on the list. One of them was the social media manager and the other one was blog writer and editor. And it was like social. So what I do for my day job right now, I make costumes and sell them on the internet. Oh, that's so there's a amazing. lot. <laughs> Yes. That's really cool. But there's a lot of social media for that. I'm just like constantly making pictures and, you know, I, I'm right. doing social media all day, every day, normally. And creative writing is something that I wanted to do more of, but hadn't. So, and it's like, and I have a lot of stories. I could probably write those. I could probably do that. So it was just <laughs> the thing, the, 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 the creative thing that I could do that would actually be helping the world. So yeah. I was like, sign me up. That's really cool. What a great story. And um, it, the, the beginning part you talked about mirrors so much uh, my own uh, uh, deconversion as well as what I hear in the support groups uh, quite a bit too. Um, mm -hmm. not, it's, it's hard to say, I mean, it's weird to say that the coming out stories are so different from one another, but also very, very similar. Um, but when you hear enough of them, uh, you can see the common thread. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but the, the pain is real. The, the struggle and the trauma is real for each individual mm -hmm. and doesn't diminish mm -hmm. that, uh, one, one bit at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what is your position here with the, the blog? I manage the blog. I, um, I started out as a writer and, um, the, the managing it is something that I take, took over relatively recently. Um, a couple months ago, I'm the person who is managing the people who are managing the blog in a way, but I'm also managing the blog. So it, my role is not 100% set because whenever I took it over from Joe, I did some stuff a little bit differently because I knew that I needed to arrange it in a way that it wouldn't be so much work on one person. It needed right. to be like, you know, more delegation. <laughs> so it's what I do for the blog is still a little bit of a work in progress. That's why I'm having a hard time with it. Just... <laughs> no worries at all. <laughs> so we we are taught we're saying blog uh, and um, what tell us about this blog. What what is it for? What what problem does this blog solve? 
All right, so it's called X Communications, and the tagline, stories from ex-believers, doubters, and those recovering from religion. So it's like basically a little spot on the internet where if you're someone who has left religion and you're just looking to read things, you know, stories from other people who have gone through the same thing. So some of them are actual deconversion stories that people post. And a lot of it is just, there's a lot that's different to going about your day-to-day -day life, just like raising kids in a mm. secular way. Um, it, it, a million topics, you know, celebrating the holidays, you know, that when you're, you're living a secular life, you know, dealing with uh, grief, um, you know, all everything, you know, a lot of the advice for life that exists out there is specifically designed for people who are religious. And so this is kind of a, and some of it is just like sharing stories and whatnot that wind up being of interest to these people, um, people like us. <laughs> <laughs> and um and yeah so and then you know the there's also this aspect where as you're writing your story you wind up working through more right. of the things that happened to you in the past it's just like that was what i discovered whenever i joined it was like wow <laughs> there I, i'm still not done deconverting apparently <laughs> so there's a cathartic acts uh a cathartic mm -hmm. Um, facet to uh, this this blog too now very much and it all, and, it, and I thought it was just a collection of uh, people's stories of coming out and, and um, their struggles but uh, I had no idea there was also some great articles on uh, many of the resources that can be found and many of the topics that come up in the support groups or in the helpline like there's articles about that on there too that's that's incredible that's that's really really cool Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of people like go through stuff like there's articles that kind of lean a little bit more towards psychology and mm -hmm. like the effects of religion on society. And so there's kind of a lot of topics that that we pull in, into one place, just anything that might be of interest to the ex-religious for the most part. You're talking about like a really broad umbrella or, uh, or mm -hmm. set of topics that the blog um, has on it. What kind of things are not, wouldn't we find on the blog? Like what, what is just not appropriate at all for, for Yes. That? So we don't do any articles that are like specifically bashing religion. And this is one of those things that there's kind of a line yeah. because like there are people who are deconstructing, deconverting, and they're like sharing the stories from those times. It can involve a lot of pain and a lot of trauma and like, you know, we're not going to tell anybody that you can't be angry. You can't sound angry while you're writing, you know, but like if there's an article where the only point is just to be like, you know, religion sucks and it's not like actually offering anything constructive, yeah. those we do turn down. <laughs> and um, then the other thing that we've had to do um, is so on medium there's actually a lot of publications that are like progressive christian publications there's like an interfaith now there's backyard church so there's just a bunch of stuff like that and we'll a lot of times get progressive christians wanting to write for our publication and when that happens it'll sound so similar to one of the articles that we write but then the conclusion is yes these people did not translate the bible correctly and that is why this happened <laughs> Got it. So th those are some that, that we wind up needing needing to turn down just because they have a better, they have other places oh, sure. where, where, you know, they can publish and we're the only one. We're the only ex-religious publication on Medium. Wow. So. Oh, so uh, Medium, Medium is like a .com website? Uh... Yes. Medium is basically a cross between a blogging platform and social media. So... Oh. We've hosted the blog there because there's already basically a bunch of writers on there and they find us organically because of the way how medium works. And um, it's, we have a goal to eventually also post these articles to our website, but for now, until I believe that's RFR 3.0 is gonna be the, the new website. <laughs> so for now, um, we were, we're, you know, staying within medium because we've got constant exposure, constant new writers coming in and finding us through it. And 
it's just really easy to use. It's it's got the editor is built in, the spell checker is built in, you know, everything mm. that you need to run an online publication is just there. Yeah, so it's, it sounds like um, uh, the platform is separate from uh, the RFR website itself. And yes. that feels very similar to support groups where m- we use meetup to uh, oh, okay. yes. have all of the, the support group meetings there and the various geographical areas. And we, yes. we and, and I think the plan is with RFR 3.0 to bring the support groups uh, together in one place as mm-hmm. well. So mm-hmm. that's, that's cool. All right. I got it. Um. <laughs> So is it just, it sounds like there's a couple of volunteers um, yourself and you're kind of managing the the volunteers. uh, And I would imagine you guys are editing and gatekeeping. Yes. Yep. Right now I'm managing the blog and we have a couple of uh, editors in addition to me. I'm also taking over editing duties and we do like a rolling week schedule where one person will just, so our authors, some of them are people who are RFR volunteers. Some of them will actually uh, write articles for us. Some of them are people through who have found us through medium. And so basically what the editor does is, you know, reads over the articles that come into the publication and then publishes them. So it sounds like more than just the editors or even our of our volunteers can write articles. Mm-hmm. Who, yes. Who, yes. Who can submit articles to, to Ab- anyone who has an account on medium another way. So there's actually two ways to submit an article to us. Um, if you have an account on medium and are already a writer on there, or even if you want to, start writing and do multiple articles it would be it's good to join medium for this purpose because then um you, you know it's it's it is you, you've got the you've got it set up to where you can send it to us um the other way is you can actually just directly contact the rfr blog email it's blog at recovering from org, and if you send me an article there i can publish it to our blog from the RFR account on Medium. So that's another way that we, that we publish articles on there. That's fantastic. Does RFR make any money off of, like I imagine there's ads and stuff on these things too? Yes. So the way Medium works is um, the proceeds from an article goes to the person who wrote the article. So any article that is published from the RFR account will um, earn a little bit of money for RFR. And um, Medium is a platform where you can write on there for free. But if you want to read articles, and RFR has a read for free page, so where any any of our our clients can, because we didn't want it to be stuck behind a paywall. But um, like the rest of Medium doesn't have read for free pages. So if you like get to where you really enjoy reading other people's articles on there, then it's like a $5 a month subscription. Too. And then the five dollar a month subscription is what pays the writers that you're reading. Okay, so, uh, so it sounds like this could this is this is a little bit of revenue for recovery mm-hmm. in itself too. Yes, yep, yes, oh. a, a little bit and growing every month. So. so if I were to go um, and read an article on RFR, those ads that pop up and and you know show me stuff about Peloton or exercise equipment or whatever it's actually not ads it's actually a subscription service there is no there are no ads on medium my mistake oh thanks for clearing that up um so off of the top of your head um or unless you have it pulled up or something what are some of the more popular articles um or or even topics that uh uh, Mm -hmm. that people come to and consistently look at so um it's we publish such a wide range of stuff that it's hard. What has actually happened is um, most of our articles are really close to equal in popularity. Whenever there's something that's just like really relatable, it tends to get more reads. So it doesn't actually matter as much the topic as how it's written, whether it's something that, you know, sucks you in and, you know, keeps you, it's it's more the writing than, than the topic. Um, But medium is social media. So there is an algorithm. And if the algorithm picks up an article and decides to feature it on the front page of medium, suddenly, you know, you'll have then and then spike. <laughs> and we had that happen two months ago. Really? So, yes. Yes. It was, we had one article that got 
uh, 7,000 views when they're normally getting like, you know, one to 200, depending on the article. So it, it just went crazy for a little while. It was like, what is going on? Because what happens whenever you get an article that goes viral, there'll be a bunch of people that suddenly discover your publication all at once. So we were getting a ton of submissions. I was like having two or three oh. authors asking to join every day. And we were getting like one to two submissions of articles every day. And it was like, okay, if this needs to keep up, I'm going to need some new editors. Oh boy. <laughs> but, but then, then, then it, it went back to normal after a little while. So, <laughs> Jeez. And so that is, uh, it sounds like it's a challenge. Um, if, uh, with the limited number of volunteers that you have uh, and editors that you have, um, if there are a, a mass of e uh, submissions that come to you, that really kind of bogs down because you guys have to read every single submission that comes through. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, if it's a good problem to have, <laughs> it's definitely a good problem to have. <laughs> Just need more volunteers to, to solve that problem. Uh, if there's, and, a, uh, yeah, and we are, we are actually looking for volunteers and in, in, in the, the blog thing. I've been working behind the scenes on like, you know, how to do like how, how to documents for all the stuff. Oh, and then, yeah. and then the next step was going to be to recruit people. So <laughs> really? we are at that point right now. <laughs> So speaking of volunteering, what has volunteering been like for you? It has been unexpectedly awesome, I guess, is the best way. Like, so the pandemic, and I, I think we all experienced it during the pandemic, like you're trapped in your house and suddenly like everything that you used to be working for in life is seeming a lot more silly. And like, you're, you're just like, I was... I don't know. I, I was, I spent the whole entire first part of the pandemic listening to nonstop philosophy and what is wrong with the world. And like, I just went on this huge kick to just like try and like better myself a little bit. And then I'm like, yeah, but what are you going to do? Do something. <laughs> Got it. And and so it was, I was looking for something to do volunteering as like, like I said, I, I, did volunteer activities with my church and then everything else that I, I mean, I've been doing stuff that's fun and, you know, in, and, you know, not bad, but like, I haven't done anything that was like, you know, filling the need to do something for other people as much, you know? And, and so, yeah, it was just, I was really feeling that I was looking for something. So whenever this one popped up, it was like, and I didn't expect it to do what it has done for me. Like there are so many things that in writing about them, it was like, I, that still affects me. That still affects me. Or like, you know, you, you have the, you, you go through life and, and you're completely sane for most of it. And then all of a sudden, you know, just like, Oh, that, that just triggered the crazy person. Um, <laughs> and I, I discovered, Oh, the things that trigger my crazy person, I'm starting to figure out where they come from. Okie dokie. <laughs> and, and writing through it like made this huge difference so. wow. well, and then there's also the community the community we have here is is kind of amazing like the other volunteers that you get to meet yes yeah yeah like meeting well and like even just you know in a weird way it's similar it, it feels similar to what I experienced meeting people at a new church, mm -hmm. but with less fear of it blowing up in my face whenever they decide I'm not good enough for them, if that Ooh. makes any sense. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's great. That's really, really cool. Are, um, are you getting to, um, are there like regular writers who aren't necessarily volunteers yes. for our farm? Yes. Getting to them as well? Yes, there's, there's a few. There's also, so we have the blog team channel on the Slack that, that will sometimes, you know, discuss some random things. There's, you know, there's, uh, right now I'm, I'm one of the editors and we've got two more. And then, um, Joe who stepped down as blog manager is still in there with us. And, you know, we have random discussions about things occasionally and, you know, just even like the, the time that I went to the, the silly little yearly meeting and just sat in so I could see what was going on. It was like, they're so friendly. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I've found that too. Like the community is, is unlike anything I've experienced uh, before. It's really, really um, 
uplifting and uh, yeah. I feel encouraged. I don't feel torn down. Yes. Um, yeah. Yes. And before, before I, I, while we're on the subject of community, um, there is another uh, little community thing that connects to the blog. There's, if you're in the RFR online community workspace, mm -hmm. there is a channel called Share Your Story. And we created that so that um, people could post their deconversion stories in there. And then if they want, like I won't take anything from there unless somebody wants to share it publicly, but if they want to share it publicly, we can actually work it into an article for the blog. So, so there's, there's that also that, that we're like talking over some of our deconversion stories in, in the, the Slack channel. So if I am uh, afraid of being um, like, it, like if it's, if I have to be, anonymous like uh, i'm i'm still stuck in my my religious community but i'm having doubts or i'm beginning to transition out of religion um is there a way that i could if, and i'm not part of the rfr online community is there a way i can anon anonymously uh submit articles uh for to the blog to kind of yes. work through my yes. stuff yes Yep, that's the the blog at recoveringfromreligion.org email address i receive articles like that uh, all the time actually <laughs> and then they just let me know you know it's like if if it's a you know pseudonym or just say anonymous you know any any of those any of those work so it sounds like you've got a lot of samuel clemens uh writing for you as mark twain's <laughs> oh yes <laughs> oh. Christina, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with me and kind of explain to me more about the blog. I learned a lot and um, I can really see the value of what uh, this blog can bring, um, not only through sharing the stories, like on the, the very surface, it seems like sharing the stories is really helpful, but the way you described it too, also writing the stories has been uh, very healing for you as well. Very, yeah. very. Yep. Well, again, thank you so much for taking the time to sit with, down with me. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs>